Let's get started on today's notes over simplifying algebraic expressions. And we're actually going to be simplifying and evaluating expressions. And I'll show you what that looks like. So this is meant to be a review. Hopefully you've seen all of these concepts before. So I'm gonna go through them rather quickly and I'm gonna assume that you know what I'm talking about in certain situations. So first off, when we have an expression, that means we have a statement that does not have an equal sign. If it had an equal sign and I said what's over here is equal to what's over here, then it would be an equation. So we're only looking at expressions today, not at equations. Therefore, we can only simplify them and we can evaluate them when we know the value of a variable. So let's get started on number one. When I simplify an expression, the first thing I'm gonna do is distribute the term that's right outside the parentheses into every term on the inside of the parentheses. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is combine like terms if I have any like terms. So let's look at number one. Negative three times four x squared is negative 12 x squared. Negative three times negative two x is positive six x. And notice I'm paying attention to my integer rules. A negative times a negative is a positive. Negative three times positive one is negative three. Do I have any terms that are alike? No, so I can't combine anything. I'm actually done with number one. That is that expression, this is that expression simplified. Let's look at number two. One half is the term that's right outside the parentheses. So this is the term that I'm gonna distribute into every term on the inside of the parentheses. So when I do this, I get rid of my parentheses. When I multiply one half, times every term on the inside, this is only going to affect the number. Uh, it's not going to affect the variable and the exponents. We'll get to that in a later unit. So one half times two x cubed is just one x cubed. And do I need to write a one there? No, can I? Sure, you could put a one there in front of that x cubed. One half times negative four x squared is negative two x squared. And then one half times positive eight is positive four. And now we have our expression. We don't have any terms that are alike. And you may recall that I, when I write an expression that contains variables and different exponents, I write it in alpha order with the highest exponent first. So x cubed, and then here's negative 2x squared or minus 2x squared plus 4. So I've actually written it correctly. Let's look at number 3. So number 3 might be what is very challenging for a lot of you because it contains decimals and fractions. Ooh, scary. But I'm gonna walk through this and I'm gonna talk you through it without using a calculator. Some of you might rely on your calculator and that's totally okay. But if you are planning on taking your SAT at any time, there is a non-calculator portion. So I would encourage you to try to not use your calculator. So 3 fourths is my term that's right outside the parentheses. So this is what I'm going to distribute into every term on the inside of parentheses. Remember, terms are separated by plus or minus signs. So I only have two terms here. So 3 fourths times negative 1 half. If I multiply those together, 3 fourths times negative 1 half, well, first a positive times a negative. My answer is going to be negative. And when I multiply, I multiply across. So three times one is three, four times two is eight. So this is negative three eighths x squared. When I multiply three fourths times eight x, that's three fourths times eight over one. Remember, you can always what I call pre-simplify, meaning four right here and eight have a common factor, it's four. 4 divided, 4 divided by 4 is 1, 8 divided by 4 is 2. Now that I've pre-simplified it, I don't have to simplify it at the end. So 3 times 2 is 6, and 1 times 1 is 1. So 3 fourths times 8x is actually 6x, positive 6x. Now, what I do when I'm looking at a problem, I notice that I have a whole number here, or an integer here that's 8, and I have a denominator that um, is a factor of 8 or a multiple of 8. It could be that as well. So I go ahead and simplify it. I pre-simplify it in my head. Say, like, Okay, that's a 1 and this is a 2. And then 3 times 2 is 6. 
then plus 0.5x squared. Now, because I have fractions over here, I'm actually going to go ahead and convert this to a fraction. What is 0.5 as a fraction? It's 1 half. So plus 1 half x squared. And I've got two different colors here. I'm actually going to change colors again. Let's do this one. So now I actually have some like terms. I have an x squared term right here and an x squared term right here. Remember, like terms have the same last name, quote unquote. Same variable, same exponent, exactly the same. So now I need to combine these. How do I combine them? I add their coefficients. So I've got negative 3 eighths plus 1 half. How do I add fractions? I get a common denominator. Get a common denominator, then add your numerators. All right, so now I've just converted, I've created an equivalent fraction for 1 half, it's 4 eighths, and now I just keep my denominator, and then I add my numerators. Negative 3 and positive 4 is positive 1. So I'm going to write that as 1 eighth x squared, and then I can't combine this with anything, so plus 6x, and that's that expression, simplified. There it is. Let's move on to evaluating expressions. What do I mean when we evaluate expressions? What you're going to do is first simplify the expression first. So we're going to simplify everything we just did. We're going to do that again. But because we're evaluating, you are given the value of the variable. And I'm actually going to highlight that here. In this case, x is negative 2. So we're going to replace that variable with the value of the variable. So let's simplify it first. Can I simplify this first expression? Yes, I have like terms here, negative 2x and positive 3x. So I'm going to rewrite this as 4x squared plus x minus 1, right? Because negative 2x plus 3x is positive 1x. And all I'm going to do now is I'm going to replace the x variable with what x equals. If x equals negative 2, anywhere I see x, I can replace it with negative 2. So this is how I do this. I see an x right here, and I see an x right here. The first thing I'm going to do is replace that x with parentheses. Everything else stays where it is. And then inside the parentheses, I'm going to put what x equals, which is negative 2. And now I'm just going to simplify it using my order of operations. Remember, PEMDAS. Okay, so let's do our exponents first, right? This is 4 times negative 2 squared. I need to apply that exponent first. Negative 2 squared means negative 2 times negative 2, which is positive 4. So that's 4 times 4 plus negative 2. I go ahead, I actually combine plus negative and make it minus 2. 4 times 4 is 16. And I'm going to go ahead and do negative 2 and negative 1 is negative 3. 16 minus 3 is what? 13. If you chose to do 16 minus 2, then minus 1, you would still get 13. Okay, let's move on to number 5. Simplify and evaluate 3 times 2x squared y squared minus 4x plus y and you're given x equals 3 and y equals negative 1. Okay, let's walk through this. So the first thing I'm going to do is distribute this term into every term on the inside of the parentheses. So I get 6x squared y squared minus 12x plus 3y. So I've simplified it. That's the first part. The next thing I need to do is anywhere I see an x, what am I going to replace it with? A 3. Anywhere I see a y, what am I going to replace it with? A negative 1. So let's fill in our variables with the values that they equal. So 6 times x squared is going to be 6 times 3 squared times y squared is times negative 1 squared minus 12 times x, which is 12 times 3, plus 3 times y, which is 3 times negative 1. You see how we got that? If you need a pause, go back. Whatever you need to do, that's what makes the beauty of a video. Great. So now let's apply our exponents first. 6 times, what is 3 squared? It's 9. 
What is negative 1 squared? Be careful. Negative 1 squared is negative 1 times negative 1, which is positive 1. That's very different than negative 1 squared. Negative 1 squared, when it looks like this, you apply the exponent first, then you apply the negative. It's, if you it, think of it as your exponents and then think of this as multiplication. So this would be negative 1. So that's very, very different. How you write it matters. So negative 1 squared is positive 1, and I'm actually not going to write positive times positive 1 because anything time, times 1 is itself. So minus 12 times 3 is 36. 3 times negative 1 is negative 1. 6 times 9 is 54 minus 36. I'm sorry. You know what? That's not 1. That's 3. So I'm actually going to do negative 36 and negative 3. That makes negative 39. So 54 minus 39 is what? And if you need to do this, 54 minus 39, go ahead and do that and you get 15. Let's move on to geometric applications. So this is the last part of today's lesson. And all we're going to do is calculate the perimeter of each figure. We're going to simplify that expression, and then we're going to evaluate given, it, given the value of the variable. So let's do that first. Calculate the perimeter of the following triangle. When I calculate the perimeter of a triangle, what am I going to do? Add up all the sides. So 3x squared minus 2x plus 4x squared minus 3y plus 6x plus 7y. And we're just going to combine like terms at this point. And I'm going to start with the variable with the highest exponent. So 3x squared plus 4x squared is what? 7x squared. And then I have negative 2x and positive 6x, and that makes positive 4x. And then I have negative 3y and positive 7y. And what's that? Positive 4y. And obviously, I don't have any terms that I can combine, so this is our perimeter, 7x squared plus 4x plus 4y. That's our simplified version of the perimeter. And now we're going to determine the perimeter when x equals 4 and y equals negative 1. So what am I going to do? I'm just going to replace those variables, this x, this x, and this y, with the values that they represent. So instead of 7 times x squared, all right, 7 times 4 squared, plus 4 times 4, plus 4 times negative 1. Anytime I'm substituting anything in for anything else, I always put it in parentheses first. So now let's simplify this using our exponent rules. So I'm going to, uh, using our exponent rules, using PEMDAS. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. So 4 squared, I'm going to do that first. That's 16. 7 times 16 plus, I can go ahead and do this. 4 times 4 is 16, and I can go ahead and do this. Minus 4. 7 times 16 is what? 112. 16 minus 4. Now, if you wanted to, you could go ahead and do 16 minus 4, which is 12. Um, but what we're going to do is just, we're just going to go from left to right. You can do that. It doesn't matter. So 112 plus 16 is 128 minus 4. 128 minus 4 is 124. So if you would have simplified that to 112 plus 12, you would have still gotten 124. So our perimeter here is 124. All right, let's go to the next one. And since this is a rectangle, we're going to use this handy dandy formula right here. We have a formula for perimeter of a rectangle. It's 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. So if I take that formula here and I plug in this is the length and this is the width, then my perimeter is not 2 times L. It's 2 times what L equals, which is 4x minus 5, plus 2 times what W equals, which is 2x plus 4. And now we're going to simplify this using... Um, the properties that we just talked about. We're going to distribute this 2 inside this set of parentheses and this 2 inside of this set of parentheses. So I get 8x minus 10 plus 4x plus 8. And now we're going to combine like terms. 
8x plus 4x is what? 12x, negative 10, and positive 8 is negative 2. So your perimeter simplified is 12x minus 2. So now it says determine the perimeter when x equals 8. So what am I going to plug in for x? I'm going to plug in 8. So instead of 12 times x minus 2, it's going to be 12 times 8 minus 2. 12 times 8 is 96. 96 minus 2 is 94. So your perimeter here is 94. And that concludes your notes over simplifying algebraic expressions. And we also evaluated algebraic expressions and looked at some geometric applications. So I hope this was a good review for you. Good luck this year in Algebra 2. You're going to be great.